Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and I'm very excited because I finally get to tell you about the Lulzbot Mini. And I've, I've, I've been, oh man, it's so hard to find time to do these printer reviews, but I love doing this, and I really love doing this about this printer, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Are you ready? Go. Ah, welcome back. Well, you know, now's a good time as any to subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already. In fact, the subscribe bar right here in front of my lovely face should be clickable, and then you can subscribe to my channel if you're not. All right, let's, let's talk about this printer. Let's talk about this Lulzbot Mini. I was contacted by Lulzbot some time ago, and they said, well, you know, we can, we can ship you a Lulzbot Mini and we can loan it to you if you, if you want to do a review on your channel. I was like, great. And I started printing things with it and I was having a really, really good time. And then time got away from me and family obligations and busyness set in. And I've, I've been wanting to do this review for a couple weeks now. And it's finally, finally come together where I have the chance to sit down and record something. All right, well, let's, you know, let's, let's talk about this Lulzbot Mini just a little bit. First of all, the, the print area is roughly six inches by six inches by six inches tall. It's a six inch cube build area. The build plate itself is borosilicate glass with a PEI sheet over the top. It'll go to 120 degrees centigrade. The hot end on this thing is a hexagon hot end with a 0.5 millimeter nozzle, and it'll reach temperatures up to 300 degrees Centigrade. What materials will this print? Well, nearly anything you throw at it. However, Lulzbot discourages you from using carbon fiber materials because they're going to damage the print head more so than most other materials. But Color Fab XT, Protopastas, Matter Hackers, 3D Fuel, Boots Industries, ABSs, HIPS, TP, it's all, it's all fair game with this printer. The Lulzbot Mini requires three millimeter filament. I know it's 2.85 millimeter, but it's called three millimeter filament, whatever. All of the other printers I have use 1.75 millimeter filament. So to, to have a machine that, that requires the three millimeter filament, it's my first time using it and it, well, it worked just fine. The Lulzbot Mini ships with its own kind of modified version of Cura. And one of the first models that you print because it auto loads, the first time you open up Cura is the Roctopus. This, this Roctopus is meant to be the test print and they include a, a bit of filament that, that you can use to, to print this Roctopus. And it's, it's a cool little model. It's a little small, I, you know, I tend to <laughs> print things bigger, but then again, this machine isn't meant to print huge things. When Lulzbot sent me the printer, I did ask if they could send me a roll of something awesome to print with. Well, well they sent me some HIPS material so I couldn't help maximize the Roctopus on the build plate. And you can, as you can tell, the, the Roctopus turned out fantastic. In fact, Lulzbot Mini here did a wonderful job on the fingers of the Roctopus. Overall, it's smooth and it, it's, it's, printed, it's printed really well. The, the layer height, I think it was 0 0.2, I think it was. Oh man, and the bottom is smooth because it's, it's on this, this PEI surface over the borosilicate glass. And so everything you pull off of it is super, super smooth. I did have to give the Lulzbot Mini a chance to print the Nefertiti bust. And this is using Matter Hackers Pro Blue PLA. The, the fine folks at Matter Hackers knew that I was getting this Lulzbot Mini and they threw me a roll of PLA to do some testing as well because they know I like printing with PLA. The Lulzbot Mini did a fantastic job with Nefertiti. She's her, her cheeks are smooth and all the features are there that should be there. Uh, under her chin got a little stringy and I think that's because I didn't put enough support under there. I know the Lulzbot Mini works well with Cura and so I tried Simplify 3D and I used this rocket and printed it in vase mode. And this is the best print I've ever done of this rocket using Simplify 3D's vase mode. The, the sides are immaculate. The, the, the tip is there. It's not, it's not a perfect tip, but the Lulzbot Mini did a great job with what it had. The fins are stable, everything. It's, this, this model is near perfect. It's the Lulzbot Mini. So I did want to print something small and I printed this astronaut. Yeah, it, it's kind of tiny. It's, it's not that big. Look at this, my finger is taller than this astronaut. The astronaut came out 
wonderful. And the Lulzbot Mini had no issues with the very small details on this astronaut. I'm, I'm incredibly, incredibly impressed. Well, last but not least, yeah, I had to. All right, so now what I wanna do, I wanna show you how it prints. And I've, I'm gonna start a print, but then I'm gonna cut in some footage that I took earlier about the print. It's just, it's just gonna be easier that way. So right now, I swapped out the hips for some ColorFab Green PLA, and I'm gonna print something. The printer first puts the whole extruder carriage here in the upper left-hand corner because that's where it parks while it gets its temperature right. And once it gets its temperature right, it's going to clean the nozzle and then it's gonna level the bed automatically. So this process of cleaning the nozzle is actually quite genius. You, the nozzle rubs against a pad on the back of the build plate and it's just, it's kind of violent, watch. You'll, you'll see it and it'll shake this whole table, no joke. Any of the other printers I own, I would be afraid of the nozzle and the whole extruder carriage rubbing on it like that because it would destroy things or make things catch on fire. But the way that this printer is engineered, it's built to do that. Once it's done with that, it actually levels the build plate. There's these four metal discs in each of the corners of the build plate and the hexagon hot end is conductive. So it goes and it touches down on each disc and that gives it a height of that corner and it knows the level of the bed, and then from there, it can print a fantastic first layer. Right now, I'll cut in some footage that I took earlier with my iPhone, where it showed the process that it just went through a little more close up. All right, it looks like it's starting to print. So let's, let's, let's go over the three things I like to go over. First, uh, let's go over the things I like, and then let's go over the things I don't like, and then now let's, let's do a final thought. Okay, things I like. This printer is built tough. The, the case is metal, and it's, it's, it's held together real tight. There are 3D printed parts on this machine, and they look rigid, they look robust. The machine itself, uh, even even through the action of it, of it rubbing the nozzle on the back of the bed, it's just that would tear some machines apart. But instead, this just laughs at it and uses that mechanism and that motion to its advantage. I really like the hot end. It's a 0.5 millimeter nozzle, but it'll go to 300 degrees Celsius. You could throw nearly any material through that thing. I really, really like the way it levels the bed and I really, really like the way it cleans the nozzle. That is, that is genius. It's absolute genius. And once you use it, you're going to know exactly why I love it so much. All right, I guess things I don't like. So technically there is nothing wrong with this machine. Uh, you notice I have my laptop hook up to, hooked up to it. And so that's, that's because you have to print tethered. There's no LCD or control panel or SD card slot in order to print things. Uh, I've, I've connected it to my computer and I've printed with Cura. I've printed with Simplify 3D. I've even hooked up a matter control touch from Matter Hackers to this thing. I had a 14 hour print and it worked gloriously. But still, there, it's, it's headless essentially. So, so you, you're stuck with having to tether it to something. The fact that it's such a small build space is worrisome to me because I generally don't like to be limited by the size of my build plate. I have GMAX printers, right? I print things 
huge. Uh, so I know it's a Lulzbot Mini. There's nothing technically wrong with having that smaller build plate. It's just, again, this is, these are personal things. These are things that, well, I, if I were to acquire a Lulzbot, I would most likely go for a TAS 5 or the upcoming TAS 6 just because it has a larger build surface. And finally, I just, I don't like that it takes three millimeter filament. I don't like three millimeter filament. It's, it's, it's big. I don't, I don't buy it. I have lots of other machines and they all take 1.75 millimeter filament. And the fact that this stands out in a way, it's just kind of a sore thumb. And I've, I've read that some people can print with 1.75 millimeter filament in the Lulzbot Mini. And well, that's really interesting because that's actually a roll of color fab, 1.75 millimeter filament on the spool holder and it's been printing using 1.75 millimeter filament this whole time. So even though it's built for three millimeter filament, I, with no machine modifications other than changing the filament diameter in the slicer, it's printing with 1.75 millimeter filament. This is fantastic. I can't gripe about that. My final thoughts. This is really interesting because there's nothing wrong with this machine. It's technically proficient. It's it's incredibly easy to use. It, from the time to turning it on to the time of it leveling the build plate for you, cleaning the nozzle and printing something is very low. I, he, here's where it stands. For the price range that this printer is in, this is the best printer I've ever used. I would have an army of these things in a printer room just printing things constantly and I wouldn't worry because of how well it's built and how well it can perform. The price is is wonderful. It's it's a little bit over $1000 US. I put that in the same range as a Flash Forge Creator Pro and a Dremel 3D Idea Builder and any of the other machines plus or minus a few hundred dollars around $1000 and this of all the machines I've used, this beats them all. This is the best printer I've used in that price range. All right, well, with that said, this, this, this My Way review is kind of over. Leave me a comment if, if you have any more questions about this machine. Give it a thumbs up if you like Lulzbot or, or, if, or if you think my hair is on point right now. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and right up there is the link for Patreon if you'd like to support me through patreon.com. Again, I'm, I'm always gonna do this for free as long as I can, but if you want to give me a dollar a month, I'm not gonna stop you. I will always accept social high fives. I guess I'm just gonna let it print. Why not? Hey guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. As always, high five.